Throughout 2013, Ed DeMarco, the acting director of the FHFA, which oversees Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, continued to oppose all settlements with homeowners seeking only evictions. City Life resolved to fight each one of those many cases, including Olive Hendricks. When Olive lost his court case, we organized a vigil at his house and the blockade. We won the blockade, and a tense 21 day standoff ensued. The standoff took the form of a constant presence of members at Olive's house, ready to alert our group at the first sign of movers or police. On August 22nd, bank representatives and police swooped in to begin the eviction. City Life mobilized 75 people in an hour. Nine people were arrested. They were released without charge by a police captain who called the eviction an example of savage capitalism. After the dramatic standoff in front of Olive's home, City Life was determined to go on the offense. We had several leadership team discussions that were very substantial, and we planned a series of protests at the housing court, each one involving civil disobedience. The demand was to stop no-fault evictions by Fannie and Freddie. We went to the housing court on five successive Thursdays in September and October. On the third protest at housing court, Mel King joined the arrestees. His arrest suddenly broke through the media silence on the protests. As a result of his arrest and all the protests, the city council passed a resolution calling on Fannie and Freddie to stop no-fault evictions. Our two-year battle to dump Ed DeMarco finally bore fruit when the rules on filibusters were altered by the Senate. This allowed Mel Watt to be confirmed by a simple Senate majority. He was sworn into office January 6th of this year with a tremendous amount of hope riding on his appointment. Although we fought hard for Mel Watt to replace Ed DeMarco as head of Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, we had no assumptions that he would automatically change policy on principal reduction. We called for a rally on President's Day in February 2014. 150 people gathered at the home of LeVette Seals. It was approved for a buyback through Boston Community Capital, but Freddie Mac wouldn't negotiate. We marched to Christ Church in Hyde Park for a speak out. Senator Markey's aide spoke at the gathering, and everyone signed a letter to Mel Watt, urging him to negotiate. Even though Mel Watt had been in office for five months, Fannie continued evictions, including an 85 year old woman at 193 5 Norwell Street. City Life decided to occupy that at vacancy, pressing demands that the building should have been sold as affordable housing to Kohe. Although we were kicked out by police after three days, our occupation led to two large protests of 100 people at that site. During the occupation, City Life continued its innovative integration of arts into political organizing. Our new arts committee organized a grassroots radio station, which broadcast continuously over 106.1 FM from Norwell Street. A banner hung from the chimney proclaiming noises over Norwell. Even though the foreclosure crisis is far from over, City Life Vida Urbana is adapting and transforming to meet the needs of our community around us. This year, we've begun building two important campaigns with the hopes of uniting renters, Section 8 holders, and homeowners in a common fight against no-fault eviction in our communities. As we enter the year of transformation, we hope that you will be along for the journey and that by uniting those around us, we may transform the world together.